Hi everyone and welcome to our second episode of Road to Indie TV. I'm Kristen Vautier, joined here by JP Menterola, and I believe we managed to get Johnny back to his booth. Johnny? Yeah. Is that, is that what I think it is? You got your tea? Cup of tea, guys, cup of tea. Very happy, I'm a happy <laughs> man this week. How's your house? Have you been fixing it, making it nicer? Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, need to get some photos up in here. I think we've got some Nigel Mansell, Damon Hill pictures coming, which next uh, episode, talked about. Next episode, you'll get it, it's a Sort promise. It out. We, will, it out. we will ask production to give you some frames there. Seriously, it needs to get sorted. So JP, a lot of great segments today. I, I know, I know, I, I'm really excited. Uh, why don't we talk about a little bit, for those who didn't know, we have our gala, red carpet, for the launching of Road Indie TV. Yeah, amazing success. I mean, over 200 guests, some political figures. We got some business leaders, we have some uh, race drivers, some owners also from Tim, racing teams. Tim Sindrick from Team Penske was there. Absolutely. Yeah, he was I mean, here with his son Austin Sindrick. For those who uh, didn't saw the, the videos, we have some videos at uh, Road to Indie TV and also we have a uh, Facebook account. So you can uh, replay it and, and watch what was. It was great. But that was only an appetizer compared to the amazing race here we've had in St. Petersburg. Yeah, I mean, what a race. Uh, weather, conflict, uh, races being cancelled, drama. drama. That's, that's what we like, really. Yeah, really. I mean, the USF 2000, one race on a wet track, one race on a dry track. Amazing weekend for RC Anderson. He's leading the points. Great weekend for Victor Frenzoni. A lot of drama on Sunday. Yeah, I, heard, I heard that got disqualified for some technical yes. reasons. I, I'm his not really car sure. was after Burner Autosport didn't pass technical inspection, unfortunately, um, and he got disqualified. I mean, it's um, yeah, yeah. A little bit, little bit unfortunate that these, you know, the rule book is written out. It's uh, it's really tough on the drivers and the teams. That, you know, sometimes teams just make small mistakes, which uh, yeah. which can have un really unfortunate consequences. Well, but th those guys will be back. It, it happened in Formula One, and uh, you you, you does, would think it about does, it. It will yeah. happen also in the in the series, like exactly at every level. So uh, a very strong weekend for a uh, rookie Jake Eitzen. Uh, podium finish as well for Frenchman uh, Nico Jamin, a rookie as well. We went from tenth on the grid to uh, uh, third on the on the first race on a wet track. Amazing moves. So that was uh, that, there was a lot of action. In I this was race. really surprised though that. On, on Saturday, after the, the rain, and they, they decided to go ahead and do the race, yeah. I literally went running to turn one, waiting to see a massive, massive drama. And uh, the kids drama. behaved, they behaved, and everybody made it through. So that was some clean racing. Um, Pro Mass, that was amazing as well. Um, both races were on drier track. Spencer Piggott confirmed his great form from this winter, right? My God, this guy is, is on another level. He is I mean, in the zone. The, yeah, by the time he finished the first lap, you can see there is a, a really big gap and he did not look behind. He's just keep pushing yeah. and pushing and his pushing. His team is in great form, Junkos Racing. <coughs> one there's first and second in every race with Kyle Kaiser. Johnny, Johnny, sorry. There's a lot, there still has a lot of talent in that Pro Mazda field. I actually watched uh, some of the race from turn one and tell you that Spencer, Spencer drove beautifully, but He's going to have people hot, hot on his heels soon, I feel. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you have the female drivers also coming up and pushing really yeah, good. You see Michelle Julia from Garner, Julia Ballario. Julia Ballario did a fantastic yeah. race on Second Sunday. Second race, massive really improvements. Uh, big recovery from Tim Pelfrey and, and people, we were just saying, who, who struggled at the start of the weekend. He's one of the favorites, but they seem to struggle and recovered really well, finished on the podium. I was impressed yeah. uh, uh, in the Pro Mazda by the Junkos team, though. If you if you remember what happened on the test, the first test that they did, they have the three cars doing the one, two, and three. It was incredible to They're see. They're on strong form, yes. The tires have changed a little bit uh, this year. The front tires on the Pro Mazda cars, and it seems like they've adapted really well. Um, Cape Motorsports uh, are a rookie team in the series. Uh, They're stepping up from USF 2000 with uh, Scott Argrove and Neil Alberico and. Um, what a strong form for, for these guys as well. A podium finish uh, on the first race. I mean, first race in the series for them, it's, um, it's pretty amazing. You know what was my favorite part is to see a star of the race with all the cars lined up, flat out from zero. Standing start, yes. Oh my God, it was, that was really good. Yes. Another, another thing I noticed about the standing starts, it really, there was so much more drama. You could the fans absolutely loved it. You could hear them in the in the start finish when the, the lights come on up. and the yeah. engine it's, engines are bouncing off the, the limiter. Up. There it's was just, just more just anticipation. Starting, starting from the noise of those cars going 
flat out. The Mazda rotary engine, I mean, beautiful. this noise is unique. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. And uh, I mean, that was, um, the, that was there was good drama there, but I, I'd say the Indy Lights race was the most dramatic with this huge and crash right. at the start. I mean, Scott Anderson, small mistake, but big penalty, a big crash and uh, some I mean debris. That, I mean, that Lloyd wheel, Reed, the, yeah. the wheel coming out and the driver trying to... Yeah, Lloyd Reed, amazing it. reflexes. I mean, <coughs> this wheel flying came like so an inch from talking his, about from his Talking about yeah. Indy Light, uh, I was lucky to be in the, in the pit lane. And what it goes through your mind while you're being wrapped really tight in your car and everybody's looking at you and you're trying to get I guess concentrated what what is it yeah I mean every driver have their own routine to try and get in what we call the zone you know get, get in your own world but it's uh, you know you're uh, standing next to your car at first with the team listen to the national anthem and then you start getting ready get in the car put your helmet on get strapped in um, you talk briefly with your team about the race and and then you try to start visualizing what's coming ahead. Uh, the starting procedure, uh, you do a lap of the track in your head uh, to try and, and you know not have any surprises uh, when the race starts. So that's called visualization. Uh, lots of drivers do it. It's what we call mental training. Tristan, and, yeah. I think it's really important to note, I think you'll agree with this, but different drivers have different approaches and what works for one driver may not work for the other, so you'll exactly. see dri yeah. drivers have all yeah. different kinds of prep. Like yeah. I imagine, you know, I like to have a sleep before I got in the car and I know I had teammates let, who had to run. Let me ask you this, which one is, is more nerve wracking? The, when you are flat out waiting for that green light or before the race, when, when before you turn on the engine? I think for most people it's before you turn on the engine because once the engine is on, it seems very noisy from the outside, but you get your visor down and before you leave behind the safety car when you're standing on the grid with the engine on all of a sudden everything becomes quiet uh, you're inside of your helmet and you're in your own world and i'd say that's when the pressure starts going off um, then you have the warm-up lap you warm up the tires and and i think you you're you know you're rolling and i think all the pressure goes down and that's it you're there so just yeah. on just on yep. tell me you know, we saw that big accident on the first lap of the Indy Lights race, unfortunate accident, but Lloyd Reed was very fortunate to avoid further damage. And just talk to us about, you know, when you're in those instances and you're able to carry on, like what goes through your mind in moments how you, like that? How, yeah, how do you, you go back to what do you need to do? Well, I think that's where you realize what human body is capable of, like what your brain is capable of doing because nothing goes through your mind. It's just pure reflex and pure instinct. You don't have time to think. It happens so fast that you just make it through the crash. Just in oh, most cases, I'm tired. And, Keep and going. right after you wonder <laughs> what just happened, and uh, but you know the next corner is uh, is ahead of you, and you just focus on what's next. So usually you never look back. Yeah. But anyway, what a win from Zach! And it was amazing to see Zach Vich get his first win at such a high level of competition, and it was also great to see Andretti Autosport uh, on top of the podium. You know what? Talking about Andretti, you know they came here uh, late night on the studio and I just see from the front door all the way to the studio Andretti stickers on the floor. You hear anything about it? No. no. You don't know anything? No, I don't. Mm, that's weird. Didn't you were looking for drivers to prepare a note or something for this episode? Well, you always ask me to try and take my own initiatives uh -huh. at JP and bring ideas to the show. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. do know what happened. So, yeah, maybe, maybe the Andretti guys called me and maybe Maybe I brought them to uh, my studio, uh, your Ooh, studio. Oh, hold on, hold on, my yeah, studio. It's yeah, yeah, your studio, my so studio. Your studio, and uh, yeah, I mean, let, let's look at the the next video. Oh, I want to watch this. Words, okay, let's take a look. No, don't touch this. This is JP's. Dude, are you what sure? What is this place? It's my, it's my studio. Kind of mine. It's kind of yours. Studio. Oh, you, you so it's not? It's here, dark. Okay. You have Xbox. Can oh, I play nice. Xbox? <laughs> oh my goodness. You sit down here. It's my place. Ooh, so you oh. don't move. It's candy. Oh my God. So, don't touch. No. This will live here. JP's. I'm going to get in trouble. No okay. It's my place, but be careful. Right. Are you going to use this TV anymore? <laughs> Shh. Tell me when the lights goes on. Here? No. 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 Okay. Oh, oh my God. Cool. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Yeah. It's on. I think you found it. Oh, okay, let's start it. So you don't tweet or don't tell anyone we're here. It's no, okay. No, no. I Instagrammed it. No, hashtags. Said I, I might get a no. new free TV, but... Yeah. Can you take that off? Or? Well, I mean, we uh, could. I don't know, we could. Right. 
then. Probably not. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get around. We'll figure it out, guys. Okay, well. Matthew, thanks for being here. Yeah. Shelby, Garrett, Zach. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for being here. So just uh, want to go over a bit, uh, you know, who you are and get to know you better. So um, uh, Zach Beach, yeah. right? Oh, that's me. Yes. Garrett Grace, yeah. and Shelby, Blackstock. Right? Yes. And Matthew Brabham, right? Yeah. Okay. That's me. All right. So um, let's start. Um, How do you guys get into racing? Oh, start with me. Um, you know, ever since I was a little kid, I was the dream, like a lot of people. Wait, ever since you were a little kid? <laughs> yeah, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Age-wise, not height-wise. A couple months ago. So. No, but I started racing carts when I was 12 after my dad was a national champion with truck and tractor pulling. So, kind of a big difference between racing cars and pulling, uh, you know, 3,000 horsepower That's trucks. awesome. I didn't know that. You didn't know that. I didn't know he was a no. national champion. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we uh, started racing carts when I was 12. Uh, did that whole thing, then Michael picked me up when I was 15 in 2010, and I've been just progressing up the Mazda Road Indy ladder since F2000 up to the now Indy Lights. So Michael and Dretti, eh? how is it to race for such a famous team owner? Well, for me, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but like he was kind of like my like idol growing up, so um, I still have like that nervousness like when I go to him because I'm still like a fan sometimes. No way, yeah. But you know, he, he's definitely a good guy. I mean, he cares a lot about you know the developmental drivers, and uh, mm -hmm. I think he's really kind of grooming us all to be in his IndyCar car someday. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So Garrett Grist, uh, coming from Canada, right? How did you get into racing? Uh, when I was five, my dad put me in a go kart. Uh, my dad, growing up, raced dirt bikes, and he wanted me to do something a bit safer, so he put me in a go kart. And then when I was 15, I started uh, practicing cars, and when I was 16, I started racing them. All right, what do you start with? Uh, 1600s, Formula Ford. Formula Ford. Yeah. In Canada, right? In Canada, yeah. I did two years in Canada. So. What brought you here? Uh, no, I want to be an IndyCar car driver. Okay. So uh, you know, the road to Indy was a logical choice, and uh, to be able to team up with Andretti is great. Yeah. Uh, I heard the guy next to you wanted to be a singer. Yeah, oh. I heard the same thing. I don't know. <laughs> I failed at it miserably. Runs in the family or something, I don't Why? know. Well, I was working on the road all my life, and it's kind of been a family trait, you could say. Yeah. Went to college, and I was always into cars and going fast and everything. My parents hate speed and all that kind of stuff, and mm. uh, went to a driving school. They referred me to Skip Barber and kind of went on from there. You started pretty late, right? I started very late. I was actually in college. I started when I was 20 years old. So okay. I'm 24 now. So. <laughs> old man. Oh yeah, man, yeah. You're really I old think old. I'm the oldest one here. You still yeah. believe though, right? I'll fully believe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Living oldest, the but I don't know about the most mature. And um, <laughs> your mom is famous country singer, right? Yes, she is. Mm -hmm. What's her name again? Reba McIntyre. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> okay, I've never heard of her. She's that kind of... Isn't that redhead character? She's oh, yeah. lights went off. Not Scottish. No. So it's a not weird. She's very popular in the truck and tractor pulling community. Dude, I'm <laughs> just, the, fact so that popular. I, the fact that Seriously. I've learned this, why didn't you go into that? I wanted to do something more than going in a straight line. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's fair enough. Yeah, I like that that's answer. That's acceptable. Matthew, uh, no. are you goofy? Am I goofy? <laughs> Is that a question? I'm, just, I'm, a, I'm a regular. Regular I'm for sure. So I forgot to ask you, did you start racing? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I basically just grew up listening to all my family talk about their wonderful racing careers at the, the dinner table, basically, and uh, they had so many cool stories and uh, crazy you know, things happen in their life. I just kind of said at one point, wow, that sounds really cool. I just want to kind of be like them and experience my own stories and you know, get my own stories myself. So. I um yeah my I just started go karting just like you know these guys except Shelby. Yeah. How does it feel to have such a big racing heritage and uh, do you feel any pressure? No really. I mean it's weird. I look at my dad as just my dad. So when he starts telling me to do stuff, I'm like, what, what are you telling? Why you don't know anything? Like, so you're just my dad. Like I, I know what I'm doing. And then yeah, I kind of have to step back and realize, oh wait, yeah he's actually done this all before. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a little bit of a reality check sometimes, but um, yeah, I just did go karting in Australia. I was born in Florida, here in uh, in the USA. Why did so, you go to um, Australia to go kart? Um, well, my family, my dad, and everyone in my family is Australian. And I guess my dad just wanted me to grow up in Australia, so we uh, moved over there when I was one, and I spent my whole life in Australia growing up racing mm. go karts, and then. Uh, yeah, just over the last couple of years, moved over here and uh, started following my racing career in the States. Uh, you guys, what's your everyday routine? 
race car drivers, people say that they just drive and party and drink and sleep. Well, some of us are under some of us are under 21 here. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I work at Roush Fenway Racing also, a uh, transmission builder. Oh, and, okay. And yeah, I've done a lot of testing for them and all that kind of stuff. So. Garrett? Uh, for me, you know, wake up, you know, eat, go to the gym. Yeah, I still, I'm still in high school, yeah. School. I still have high school. I'm finishing that right now, too. So I go to school whenever I'm home, go to the gym, and then spend time at the shop and spend time in Toronto with my engineer, Yancey. How about you, Zach? Uh, well, I just actually, uh, my dad and I just moved to Indiana. So we are uh, just got a place in Zinesville. So now kind of starting up a whole new routine, but uh, training at Pit Fit every morning, then kind of spend the rest of the day at the shop with... Uh, Kind of my crew over there just, you know, preparing for the rest of the season that we have coming. But, I mean, uh, these guys are probably in a lot cooler places. Matt's in Indy with me, but, you know, it, it's good to be around the team. All right. That's about it, guys. Last, oh, last question. You guys have girlfriends? Nope. No. Nope. I dabble here and there, you know. Drivers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for having us. good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Had fun. Is, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, best of luck <laughs> Thanks, uh, mate. Yeah. for the Indie Light season. Thank you very much. Thank you for having best us. Best of luck, Just Garrett. Man. As always, best, best of luck. Thank so you. We sneak in. JP is going to arrive, so we got to get out of here. Ah. All right. Well, 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 you follow you me, I'm going to turn the lights off. Huh? You guys didn't forget anything, eh? Your phone. Uh, no. No, no. No, 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 we're good. Good. we got everything. Fluff the pillows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you look like no one. Little fluff here, right? Everything's going to look. Don't forget your flashlight. We need to see how to get out of here. Are you still in candy? Too? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay, you go, you go, you go. Okay. You really? Really? You go and touch the light board? Turn on the cameras? It was good, it was good. It was good, good. right? Yeah. Yes. yes, I like it. Did you like it, Johnny? Yeah, he did a good job. Not bad. He's pretty easy. He can start taking over this show, see? They look like a really uh, nice... Um, Fit group and um, yeah, they're a great group of guys. I mean, they've all known each other for a while now. Um, I mean, Garrett Grist was in the team last year already in USF 2000. Uh, Matthew Brabham, known in in, uh, in Indy Lights, was doing Pro Mazda with them last year. Shelby has been there for a while too, um, as well as Zach Vich, four years with the team. So they all know each other. Uh, they're all very funny guys, but they know. Um, how to make the difference between outside of the car and inside of the car where you have to be obviously very serious and committed so uh, it was a great time. I yeah. think it's nice to see uh, you know my experience racing in Europe you don't really see that sort of camaraderie between teammates and drivers in series like you see on the Mazda Road to Indy that was a big thing I noticed when I came to the States so yeah. always always good to see. Yeah, I Talk, agree. Talking about yeah. sort of prices a third female in the Mazda Road to Indy for the Vicky MP? Piria Italian driver coming came in last minute um, you know, was, was fast in practice, showed promise, unfortunately uh, wrecked uh, the car in race one and the car couldn't be repaired for race two, so. Really, yeah, that was really, really unfortunate, but again, just shows how tough these drivers have it. You know, learning on street courses, one mistake yeah, and boom, walls, you know, it's yeah. difficult, but, uh, you know, yep, learning, all learning experiences. We, we hope she will be back. She's back to Italy, but hopefully we'll be back soon. Yeah. What about Julia Bellario from Argentina? Yeah, Michelle Bumgarner and did had a good weekend, but Julia, what an improvement curve. On Sunday. I mean, I mean she finished in really seventh place in, in really fast in the, in the lap time. Very fast lap time, four tenth of fastest lap of the race. And yeah, I mean, she, she's really coming on strong. Yeah. I actually um, was lucky enough to have some time over the weekend in the race. And uh, I invite uh, Julia Bellario so we can have a chat and uh, get to know her a little better. So why don't we take Let's a look? Let's take a look, yeah. Welcome to The Road to Indy TV. I'm JP Manterola, and today I have a special guest for you. I'm gonna be talking with Julia Bellario from Junkos Racing. But just before that, I'm gonna take her paddleboarding. Julia Bellario, no te vas a arrancar de acá del Road to Indy TV. ¿Cómo estás tú? Todo bien, vos? Bien, bajate, bajate. Bienvenida al Road to Indy TV. Bueno, uh, tenemos una entrevista, bien. No? Sí, hubo un po pequeño detalle que se me olvidó contarte. Sí. Uh, no vamos a ir directamente a la entrevista. Primero te voy a invitar a, a una clase de paddleboarding. So, Julia, cuéntanos 
un poco cerca de ti, ¿cómo parte eh, esto de, de involucrarte en las carreras, uh -huh. en, en correr, en ser piloto, en, en ir rápido, peligro, adrenalina? Uh -huh. ¿Qué, qué, ¿Qué pasa por tu cabeza? ¿Cómo, cómo nace esto? Mi papá corría en, en autos cuando él tenía 27 años, 27 años más o menos. Eh, y bueno, yo veía un poco de, de todo eso ya de, desde chiquita. Y, y bueno, ya a los dos años me ponía el casco de mi papá, el buzo de mi papá, me sacaba fotos, iba a todo lado con, con eso, ¿no? Con el casco siempre puesto y el buzo dentro de mi casa. Y a los siete años comencé a insistir, mis papás medio que no querían porque era muy chica y era una mujer, entonces también era muy raro que lo pida. Y bueno, después de tanto insistir, medio capaz que se cansaron de escucharme y bueno, lo aceptaron y, y ahí comencé, tuve mi primer prueba. Eh, tuve un accidente, me choqué una pared porque el karting quedó acelerado a fondo y volví a tener miedo, no quería correr más. Pero bueno, de vuelta al tiempo tenía ganas, así que comencé y ahí ya no paré más. O sea, comenzaste en karting uh -huh. eh, muy temprano. Sí. Eh, me imagino que la decisión de decir mamá, papá, ahora me toca a mí, eh, no fue siendo la única. Uh -huh. No fue así como, oye, mamá, voy a, quiero pintar un cuadro. Claro. Eh, ¿Cómo fue eso? Sí, a mi mamá al principio se le hizo jodido porque ella estaba acostumbrada a que mi papá corra y bueno, era más normal, por lo menos era un hombre ya grande. Y... Pero después se fueron acostumbrando y la verdad que, que siempre me apoyan en todo y me acompañan a todos lados. No era fácil aceptar que, que yo quiera correr. Ahora, una cosa es el karting eh, y otra cosa es, es avanzar dentro del uh -huh. automovilismo. ¿En qué minuto Julia dice, se acabó mi estadía en el karting y quiero, quiero llegar más allá? Siempre mi papá fue mucho el que me motivó de ir avanzando, ir mejorando, ir evolucionando. Eh, y cuando estaba en karting, él ya se había hecho después su equipo de fórmula. Y, y bueno, medio que lo armó pensando, pensando en mí, yo ya tenía 13, 12 años. Entonces él armó el equipo de fórmula para empezar a, a trabajar con, bien con ese tipo de fórmulas y saber bien cómo, cómo era el maneje. Y bueno, ahí a los 13 años ya probé la primera vez el fórmula. Eh, y bueno, después siempre en el equipo de mi papá corrí cuatro años en, en esa fórmula que es una fórmula interprovincial, la Fórmula Plus de, de, de la provincia de Córdoba. De a poco, cuando ya cuando se iba teniendo mucha más experiencia, eh, fui, fui entrando en otras categorías como el TC2000, el TN Clase 2, el Top Rive 6. Y, y bueno, de ahí siempre fui evolucionando en todas las categorías y siempre el que me motivó mucho y me apoyó en esto fue mi papá. ¿Cómo nace? ¿O ¿Cómo surge esta oportunidad tuya de venir el año pasado uh -huh. a probar el, el Pro Mazda junto al equipo Juncos Racing? Uh -huh. eh, Ricardo me, me empezó a seguir en, en Twitter, su, va el equipo Juncos Racing. Eh, y bueno, yo la verdad que no sabía de ellos y me llamó mucho la atención, empecé a investigar. Entonces los comienzo a seguir y a la semana Ricardo me, se presenta, me, me invita a una prueba en Indianápolis. Y bueno, enseguida le conté a mi papá, yo con muchas ganas, y, y bueno, mi papá también enseguida se entusiasmó. No sé, ni, ni hoy lo puedo creer de estar corriendo en la Promazda junto con IndyCar, de ir a entrenar Pifit con todos pilotos de IndyCar, son cosas muy locas, pero realmente a veces no caigo de todo eso, entonces me hace vivir todo con mucho más naturalidad y relajada. Yep, you lost. No, I didn't. You lost, you lost I to a girl. I let her win. Okay, let's talk about Julia. Julia, well, fast, fast, fast this weekend. Uh, she's progressing. What do you think is the key? I mean, I think she has the right environment at Junkos Racing, right? I, th I think she's got massive work ethic. She's just showing that she's willing to learn and she's obviously applying it. You know that Johnny also is, she's not used to drive yet the open wheel. She came from Ar Argentina driving stock cars. Yeah, but obviously we've seen, I mean, with Ricardo Junkos and his team, I mean, they've been dominant in Pro Mazda since the season started. They all work very well together, but I think one team might give them a hard time. I have, I know exactly what you're talking about. Go ahead. K Motorsport. With Wayne Taylor Racing, you got it. These guys, man, I'm telling you. Trouble Brits. They're British like you, right? Uh, British, they're from the North, so we, oh don't boy. Really, we don't really talk to them. You guys don't get on? Uh, Manchester United and Liverpool fans, so that's a big problem for me, so we'll just leave it at that. Okay, yeah, Sorry. let's leave it there. Well. We got to spend some time with them this weekend and we had some fun.
So Dominic and Nicolas Cape already laughing. How did you guys come to start the race team? To start the race team? Well, really, that was my dad. Did that. We used to, when we were kids, we used to travel all over Europe racing, where he raced uh, the big cigarette boats with water skiers on the back, across channel ski races and stuff. It's pretty dangerous, so that's, he did that, then he did stock car racing and a whole bunch of other stuff. That's how we got involved. When we moved to America, Dominic started driving. He drove in England for a while and then he came over here. Basically, we didn't have the money to keep racing, so we took on customers and then he kept beating the customers and they got pissed off. So eventually, you know, he had to make a decision whether it was going to become a business or he was going to continue racing. So Scott, to start off, how did you get involved with Cape Motorsports? At the end of 2012, I phoned them up and said, hey, I want to test for you guys. And I flew down here to Florida. We went and tested at Sebring. And I got a call a few weeks later saying that they uh, wanted me on the team. And I was on board right away. Neil Alberico, how did you come to race with Cape Motorsports with Wayne Taylor Racing? Um, when I first started racing in America, it was, you know, they were one of the top teams for sure. And you knew that because of their history and winning championships. So, you know, I bugged Dominic and Nicholas to get a test years ago. So once we got it, they signed us. And that was in the USF 2000 days last year. It's very um, rare in racing to find uh, two teammates who get on so well because, I mean, you guys have to beat each other on the track and then have a great relationship off the track. So how do you deal with that? Yeah, I don't know. He's making fun of me behind the camera right now, so... <laughs> you just did that a few minutes before when he was getting interviewed, so go ahead. He didn't flinch. Uh. That's someone in your mirrors. You gotta hold off the pressure and, uh, and answer my question. Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, I get along great with Scott. It is rare that you find that. I mean, all drivers are competitive. We want to get on track and beat the crap out of each other. We race to win. Yeah, Neil's a great guy to work with. Uh, he's from California, so everything's super slow for him. He, if you're in a rush, he's all, calm down, dude, there's no rush. I go down to California, and he's been up to Vancouver, and we hang out together, share the same hotel room. I mean, he's like one of my best friends off the track, but then as soon as they're on the track, he's just another competitor, and we're all going for the win. So it's a pretty cool dynamic we have between me and him. All right, so how are Dominique and Nicholas to work with? just hilarious. Nicholas, he's one of the goofiest guys I know and, and I've said that about him before and he, he always hates me about that for saying that but uh, he is so funny and Dominic, they know how to have a good time. So who is the funniest, Dominic or Nicholas? Gosh, I think they're both funny but they're way more funny when you get them together. <laughs> so which one is the most intense watching a football game, a soccer game, sorry? Gosh, intense, that's well. That'd be Dominic when he gets his brass knuckles on. He's about to go at Nick with Liverpool. <laughs> They're both from Manchester, but Nicholas likes Liverpool for some weird reason. Uh, that's what it is, yeah. Liverpool, yeah, rule! I've taken about 20 years of from him since Manchester United have been dominating everything. But finally, you know, the last year, and right now it looks like Liverpool are on top of the league. Let me just check that. Yeah. Like <laughs> Two nil. So we're on top of the league right now. So I can give him some that he deserves. All right, Dominic. I really, I have nothing to say. <laughs> Being on this team, it's it's worth it just for the laughs that you get with these guys. They're so funny. They know what they're doing, but they know how to have a good time while doing it. And we really become a whole family around here with Neil and the and the team, and everybody's really gelled together really well. So I, it's I'm proud to be part of this. You know, the Cape guys are really laid back. They understand the off offside stuff is really important to be relaxed and be yourself and they bring out the best in every single person on this team. So which one of you is responsible for the team's success? Him. Him. <laughs> JP, what's wrong with these guys? I mean, they're, they're happy, they're doing what they like. I mean, they're having fun in the road to Indy. Those guys yeah. are clinically insane. JP, you know them pretty well, right? No, yeah, no, they're good guys. They're good guys. They've got me into trouble before away from the racetrack, but they're, uh, no, they're, they, great, they're great value. They do a great job. Oh. Yeah, it seems like every car uh, they, they get, uh, every championship they enter, they're always very good at understanding all the car works and they always seem to find the right setups. Talking about setups, Mr. Johnny Baker, didn't you gonna teach us uh, something today about downforce? I think he's gonna tell us all to avoid what you did last time you tried to set up a car and it took off. <laughs> Brilliant, love it JP, yeah. 
No, but I've got a got a quick segment about downforce, talking about wing angles, drag, how you know what sort of impact it plays on the whole road to India, and you know uh, how drivers can use it. it. Let's take a look. Let's play. Downforce, common term used to describe an important component to driving a race car in the Mazda Road to Indy. As drivers progress up the ladder through USF 2000, Pro Mazda and Indy Lights, they are gradually exposed to a greater amount of downforce on the cars. But first, let's explain the concept of downforce. Just like a plane uses its wings to get lift, race cars use wings on various parts of the car to push the tires into the ground. As cars reach a higher rate of speed, air moving over the wings keeps the car on the ground and provides additional grip for the drivers so they can navigate the corners faster. Air running under the car also helps create grip. As it moves under the chassis, it's channeled by the diffuser and creates a suction effect, which helps pull the car to the ground. Something to keep in mind is that these wings can be adjusted to achieve different results on the track. For example, on slow twisty tracks, cars require more downforce to navigate the corners. On faster tracks and ovals, drag, which is where wing angle affects the speed of the car in a straight line, can become an issue. And in order to be faster, the wings can be adjusted to create less downforce. Wing levels can also be adjusted based on driving strategy. If a driver is at the front of the grid, they may want to use more wing angle to protect the tires and have a more consistent and easy to drive race car. If they qualify out of position and want to be aggressive, they can run less wing angle in order to be faster down the straights. This gives the driver a greater chance of attacking the cars in front of them. Getting this right can mean the difference between finishing first or last. So JP, you understand about the wings yeah. now? Yeah, it makes sense. Push the car into the ground or? Yeah. To... Simple physics, JP. Oh, this way. This way. This way. Yeah. You got it, right? It's really clear, okay. yeah. And folks, in our next episode, a recap of our Indy Lights race in Long Beach. Talking about Indy Lights, I got Gavi Chavez. Spend time with him, get to know him better. I heard you lost the challenge oh, again. Go. I didn't lose. Yeah, you did. I heard it won. I didn't. Yeah, he you did. did. So he won. You he lost did. twice in Can a row, JP. Can we move on, please? Oh, okay, Johnny, yep. you have some technical stuff for us? Yep, looking at sequential gearboxes, because all three series now use them, so I think it's important to see what the drivers have to put up with on that front. Team profile. And Force United. Visit us at roadtoindy.tv. Social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Don't forget hashtag R2IndyTV.